Today is a gentle flow practice. Uh, it's going to be focusing on twists and balance. So for now, we are going to start in Shavasana. We'll do a little bit of meditation. And then perhaps more people will slot in and join and know that it's just beginning. So we're just going to be led here, taking the deep breaths. In for four seconds. Hold for four seconds and breathe out for four seconds. So one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale. One, two, three, four. And keep breathing, you can breathe at your own pace. Relaxing the muscles onto the mat. And when you're ready, we're going to inhale and exhale, heads to the left. Inhale, come back up to the center. Exhale, over to the right. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, to the left. Inhale, back to the center. And exhale, to the right. And then inhale, back to the center. Exhale, Shavasana. Now we're set for Banarasana. We're going to move our legs over to the right. Inhale, arms cover both hands. And exhale, knee over to the right. I'm going to hold this position for two counts of breaths. When you're ready, you can begin to uncross your ankles, bring your arms back down into Shavasana. Take in a couple breaths here. Before gently moving our legs over to the left, crossing our right ankle over our left ankle, lifting our arms up above our head, maybe bring it over to the left side, right wrist gripping over the left, Back to the center, arms to the center, but your head and reach back down to the ground. You begin to 
lift your left leg up to the air, keep trying to keep your right leg down, if you need to bend that right knee you can, holding the hamstring, just rolling around our ankle. Change your breath, change your direction on rolling your left ankle out. Try to keep the head and the shoulders down onto the mat. Ready, ready, put your left leg back down, lifting our right leg up this time. Rolling out our right ankle one way. Then change your breath, change your direction. And put it back down. You're gonna lift up one knee in, then the other. Gently rolling around our back, or the butt of our spine on our mat. And once again, when you change your breath, you change your direction. And then when you're ready, drop over to the side of your choice to gently come up into a seated position. From here, lift our arms up into the air. Exhale, cactus arms. You're gonna inhale, arms go back in the air. Exhale, twist. Left hand comes down behind you. With right palm facing up onto your left knee. Turn your head over to the side. shoulder you lift our arms up and once again we go to the left see if we can stretch a little bit further this time but without forcing it and pushing too hard. Inhale, lift your arms back up. Exhale to the other side. find you can stretch a little bit further the one side than you can the other side. From here, inhale, arms come above head, exhale, hands to heart center. Make sure we always have our water handy. And now, we're going to go into our cat cows. So move our mat over. I'm going to move my mat over to the side. You keep your mat the way you are so you can see how I do this pose. Shoulders stacked over wrists, hips stacked over knees. When you inhale, lift the chest up, shoulders away from your ears. Head comes up, bum comes up, arching the back. Exhale, you round your spine, shoulders come up, chin tuck to chest. Looking down towards your mat. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, round. 
Inhale back up. Exhale round. Inhale. Exhale. Job, guys. So from here, you can either sit with our toes tucked under for a toe squat, or if you're on low energy, you can sit on your heels instead, or with your um, toes untucked. So we're just gonna sit, toe squat, stretching out arm, focusing on your breathing, and at any point you struggle. Remember, you always come back to untucking the toes. And swap arms. Beat our toes, so we're gonna untuck the toes and just hit them on the mat. From here, we're gonna go into some mountain climbers. So we're gonna tuck our toes under into a push up position. It's gonna be probably the most workout we're gonna do today. Mountain climbers want to just bring your toe in, then your other foot in. Almost like you're moving on the spot, but we're going to do it nice and gently. We're going to do 10 of these, 7, 8. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I just thought I'd do these, but you know, count to 10 at your own pace, so I'm just going to keep going here. Why not? Get more of a workout in. <laughs> Okay, once you've done your 10, we're going to put our big toes together, spread our legs out, and fall into a child's pose. to a tabletop position. And we're gonna lower ourselves down. Is this too close? Is too close? So we're in tabletop position from here. We're gonna untuck our toes, slowly lower ourselves to the ground. We're going to take a mild back bend with the cobra pose, so just lift up your chest and your head and try not to use your hands to assist you. Exhale, down. Going from here, we're going to plant our forearms and our palms under and just hold ourselves up for sphinx pose. Either with your eyes closed or you can find a focal point to look at.
through here. We're gonna lower ourselves back down. We're putting our hands under our shoulders and picking ourselves up into a tabletop position. Tucking our toes under. Lifting ourselves up for downward facing dog. From here, we're gonna just cut out our feet. Making sure that we have a straight back. If you bend your knees, that is totally fine. You just wanna gently move our toes. So here we're gonna gently walk up to the top of our mat, inhaling for halfway lift, for exhaling and rounding our spine. And then we're gonna gently roll ourselves up, vertebrae by vertebrae, arms come above head, and exhale, hands to heart center. From here, we're just gonna take a mountain pose. I will shoulder apart, all your feet together, palms facing up. Shoulders down and knees slightly bent. Morning, everyone. Right, so from here we're going to do a forward bend. So I'm going to have to move my mat a little bit. So from here, you know, spread our legs out and try to do a forward bend. So at first you can be, you really want to go here, um, slightly bending the knees. And if you can, you can reach all the way down. Um, there can be props you can use to help if you struggle to go all the way down. Uh, maybe like a stool or something. Um, maybe if I, I do that, I can use my my foam roller, I can use my foam roller to, <coughs> to help. Oh, it's a bit dusty, a bit of a dusty foam roller. Um, anything like that that can help you if you can't quite reach the ground. But what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna slowly walk our hands over to the left side, holding that position. before gently come back to the center and over to the right. Then we do back to left again. Focusing on the straight back, so if you are bending your knees quite a lot like me, that's perfectly fine. I can still really feel it in my hamstrings, but also I'm looking after my back, which is very important. Engaging the core will help with that if you are struggling. And then back to the right. Four. You come back to the center. Gently roll up with your vertebrae. Arms come up head. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Finding our mountain pose again, or to the dasana. Putting them. The old foam roll back. And if you have a prop, move your prop up to the side, whatever, whatever helps. Um, Next pose again, you can, we're going to do three pose. Uh, if you need balance, you can grab a chair to uh, hold on. I would recommend, if you're doing this with someone else, I don't recommend holding on to someone else because you might mess up their balance as well, unless you, it's like a mutual thing. Uh, so we're going to bend into our left side, slightly lifting our right heel up, turning it out before we gently lift it up to the calf or if you're flexible, all the way up here, but not onto the knee, because it's on the knee. You're, throw, you're forcing your, your knee to uncomfortable and weird position. It's, a, it's only a hinge joint that's meant to go forward and back, not lateral, so either up here or down here. From there, you can lift your arms up or to the side, hands to heart center, however you want, leave it down if you want to as well. At any point, you can come back down if you lose your balance. So, if you have a loosey balance, that's fine. You just shower yourself positively and you come back up again. Ooh. But find a still point to look at. Don't look at me when you're doing your tree pose because I'm gonna throw you off by my own moving. But if you, um, 
if you find this way too easy, you're like, whoa, this is... <laughs> I could do this in my sleep, why not? Close your eyes. And suddenly everything just becomes so much more difficult. Mm. Try not to, to wave around the place and then you fall, but that's okay. You just go back again, more positivity. You always remember to keep positive no matter what. Some days you'll be able to balance like this for a good five minutes. Other days you have no hope in, uh, no hope at all <laughs> to balance. So on that note, we're gonna twist up, right knee back in, stretch it out. Put it to the ground, step a little bit, shake it up, shake it up, and then we're going to lean onto the right side, picking up our left heel, twisting out, our knee facing towards the side, before we lift it up to either our half all the way up to, all the way up to our hip area. Oof, please don't you not fail when the arms come up into the air. You can either keep your eyes open, finding your focal point of stare at, preferably something still. Uh, if you have a pet as well, I don't recommend looking at your pet. They're probably trying to jump on you right now and knock you over, but that's okay. Um, if you find this too easy, you can close your eyes as well. And then you can open them if you're going to fall. Um, like I said before, if you have a chair, you can just grab a chair. Or if you have a partner who is Knowing what you're planning on doing, um, you can grab it over to them as well. But make sure you give them a heads up so you don't fall over like dominoes. Actually happened in my class before, so you got to be a little bit careful here. Very nice. So from here, we're going to stretch out our left leg, putting it back down. I'm just going to shake it out a little bit again. Because... Uh, it's quite, it's quite tough, it's quite a tough pose, uh, especially on your ankles and you do feel it in your knees as well. And once you're stretched out, we're just going to find ourselves back into mountain pose again. So, on that note, we're here in our mountain pose. Congratulating ourselves, giving ourselves a pat on the back for managing to do tree pose. It's not a very easy pose, it's tough on the balance. Maybe you want to grab some water as well while everyone else just holds this mountain pose. I like to drink a lot. I'm always drinking when it comes to uh, exercise. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to go find ourselves to the top of our mat. From here, inhale, arms to the head. Oof, got that in the shoulder there. Um, if you get weird, weird shoulder pain, maybe arms up in the air isn't, isn't fantastic for you, that, that felt a bit strange. Arm up in the air, exhale, forward fold, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, you forward fold to the point where you plant your hands down and you can either step back or you can lightly hop back into a push-up position. From here, we're going to go straight into downward facing dog. Unless you really want to do a very cycle, which is when we just go down to Chaturanga to Dasana, untucking the toes, but upward facing dog before meeting anyone else in the group down to down facing dog. From here, we're going to lift up our right leg, and we're going to put it behind our left wrist. So I'll kind of uh, ankle is stacked over the wrist, untucking the toe before we go into pigeon pose. Um, you can either take a high pigeon or if you want to, you can go onto your forearms and uh, do it like that as well. If you obviously, the lower you go, the deeper the stretch will be on your hip flexors and your groin muscles, um, and also your, uh, your quads and your glutes. It's quite a few things you're feeling when you're doing pigeon pose, so you might want to transition um, between a high pigeon and perhaps even a low pigeon, maybe you put your head down at some stage if you if you're super flexible, that's not me. Flexibility is not my strength, which is odd for someone who's a yoga instructor anyway. That's not the point, so we're gonna hold this position. Remembering to breathe, taking deep breaths. Especially I gotta remember this because I'm doing a lot of talking here.
So from here, we're going to gently unravel ourselves, pick ourselves back up, tuck under our left toe before unraveling ourselves back into downward facing dog. Um, we're just going to hold this, but again, if you really want to do a Vera cycle, then you just want to Go down to Chaturanga, up to Upward Facing Dog, and then beat everyone up Downward Facing Dog. Then we're going to lift up our left leg up before bringing it behind our right wrist. Untucking the toes. Um, from here we're just going to either go for a high lunge or a low High lunge, when I say high lunge, high pigeon pose or low pigeon pose, or you can transition in between the two. I actually do find that on my left side, I can sit deeper. Um, my left side is more stretched out than my right side. You might find that because um, my right is my dominant leg, which is my kicking leg. And when you use a leg a lot, you tend to get tighter, which means it's a little bit harder to uh, um, to get into certain poses, so um, it's quite normal if you find that your one side is tighter than the other. Unraveling ourselves into the downward facing dog. And again, if you want, really want to go through another cycle, you can go into your chaturanga, into upward facing dog, and back into downward facing dog with everyone else before we drop our knees to the, to the mat. Um, moving onto our left side, back into a easy pose, or that's basically really just sat cross legged. From here, we're going to move to the front of our mat again. We want to make sure that when we go onto our backs, we actually land on our mat and not land on the floor behind us. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come down now. Almost into a Shavasana pose. Shavasana court pose, sorry. Um, from here, we're going to pick our knees up, bring it out. Uh, foot as close as we can to our sit bones, half facing down onto the bridge pose. You may have watched this before. I do it. I'm still with you, right? Yeah, okay. So, with bridge pose, um, follow, watch me do it before you follow along because it's very important that you don't pick your head up or especially twist your head while in the full expression of bridge pose. So, we're just going to lay here and feet as close as we can to our sit bones, palms facing down in front of us either side. And we're just going to gently lift ourselves up vertebrae by vertebrae, starting with our sit bone all the way up the lumbar and the other parts of our spine, forward all the way up, making sure we keep our head down. Before we gently lower ourselves vertebrae by vertebrae. So now that you watch me do it, let's all do it together. So get into the position. Inhale, lift ourselves all the way up, vertebrae by vertebrae, bum is up, back is up, head is down, shoulders are down, wrists and hands are down. And then exhale, round. Inhale, we're going to come back up. Remember to breathe as well, don't hold your breath up here, take a couple of breaths. I don't want anyone to, uh, to be going red while doing this pose. Then on your next exhale, we're going to come back down. One more set, one more time. We're going to come back up. We're going to break, inhaling as we do so. Before we exhale, lowering ourselves vertebrae by vertebrae. From here, we're going to roll our spine. After doing bridge pose, just roll it out. And 
fact, we're going to grab our ankles and do happy baby pose. Make it sure that we smile because we're a happy baby. We're not a crying baby or a sad baby. We're a happy baby. So we're going to smile while we, uh, we do this pose. Then from here, we bring our legs together, up, arms over out to each side, or you can do a more cactus arm style, dropping it over to the left. Back up to the center. Exhale, drop over to the right. Inhale, back up. So we come to any other last thing you want to do. Maybe you want to do some yogi bicycles or maybe some candlesticks or dead birds, but any other asana you want to do before we all meet into Shavasana. Surrendering to the weight of your mat, palms facing up, shoulder away from your ears. Just lying down. Taking it all in. Listening to the sound of nature and the music. Just taking this time to relax and wind down. Gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. The more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you ever you have even more to express gratitude for. Can I see the glass? Enjoy the little things in life, for one day you may look back and realize they were big things. And finally from Albert Einstein, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other it's as though everything is a miracle.
from here, we're going to start to imagine our surroundings without opening our eyes. We're going to gently bring awareness back by moving fingers and toes, maybe gently rocking the head side to side. And only when you're ready, you can begin to tuck both knees in, dropping over to the side of your choice in a fetal position, taking this time for yourself. Before you slowly begin to pick yourself up into a seated position, stretching your arms overhead or exhaling, hands to heart center. Thank you so much for letting me join Women with Yoga practice and helping with your yoga journey, the light in me honors the light that shines in every one of you. Namaste. Right, thank you all for coming guys. Make sure you keep sharing this page and my socials are in the description as well for YouTube and Instagram. Um, be sure to give him a follow and a subscribe. Um, we're doing really well in terms of engagement, so I'm really happy with that. Um, hopefully you guys are benefiting from this uh, practice and other than that, um, Keep an eye out for the videos on YouTube and I will catch you on Monday when we do a more challenging practice. Enjoy your weekend everyone!